easy answer. Maybe this, um, you know, maybe our, our writer gets a bit lucky, you know, approach an attorney, try with a letter of command um, and see if you can resolve it on, on that particular circumstance. But, um, you know, if, if this owner is, is unfortunately trying to run away with the full purchase price where he's only entitled 50%, it's a case of you you're going to have to institute an action for the return of that 50 percent which you are owed yeah um i think yeah, that, that 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 certainly um that that covers it in terms of remedy thank you um so anonymous uh, there you have it and we we hope that you you do follow um and um, that advice and then feel free to reach out with us and we can also um obviously from BSA or SLR, we can also assist you in this type of matter, uh, litigation matter. Um, we're going to jump into the second question. Uh, this one is um, from Nomusa no or on, on our YouTube page. Um, what Nomusa has for as the question for us here, Bruno, is that um, there's a managing agent uh, basically uh, who's managing obviously her property, and the managing agent hasn't paid um rent um on behalf of the tenant for about four months um so the managing agent is basically has been receiving the rent and then hasn't been paying it over to the landlord for about four months and then what nomusa wants to know is that can she then terminate uh, the contract or the mandate that she has with that managing agent and if she does so uh then um, who will be um uh, liable to pay for the outstanding balance or even i guess what uh, steps can she take to then actually get that outstanding balance paid over to her? Um, so, look, the simple answer here is that this is a breach of a mandate by a state agent or leasing agent. I'm assuming it's a leasing agent, uh, but I mean the same same applies to managing agents when managing body uh, body corporates, for example, with levies and things like that. This sounds to me like a leasing agent. If I mandate a leasing agent and I ask him to please administer at the receipt of rentals into their account and obviously the application of these rentals to uh, for whatever reason um and then obviously payment through to me and they fail to do it it's, it's a breach so you're already allowed to cancel this mandate based on that because they're not administering the property now we keep having this conversation it's very important to distinguish between procurement fees and administrative or ongoing management fees Procurement fee is the fee that you get for having found a tenant. And so if there is a, key, a fee payable for having found the tenant, that's still payable because there is a tenant. They happen to be paying. You just aren't receiving the money. Then it's almost like the estate agent can wear two different hats under these circumstances. The second one is the management fee. Now, has that job been fulfilled? No, it hasn't. And because it hasn't been fulfilled, you are entitled to cancel the mandate. Moreover, so now we start getting into the realm of unprofessional conduct. So up until this point, the questions are answered more along the lines of contractually, what are you allowed to do? Yes, place them on terms. The mandate requires you to do it. And once you've done that, you cancel the mandate and continue on your own. Now, from a professional conduct perspective, the fact that the estate agent is not paying you is also uh, an issue that you can bring up with the PPRA, which is the Property Practitioners Regulatory Authority. This is a governing body or controlling body over state agents, or over property practitioners. So now you can lay a complaint against the property practitioner uh, to say that whatever they're doing, whether they're just misappropriating, whether they're not doing their job, whether they're stealing the money, something's happening and the body needs to look into this. Um, I mean, if this if if they're stealing the money, potentially this could even be a um, a criminal case that you could bring uh, you could bring to the commercial uh, crimes court. So uh, there's definitely a recourse against these agents, both professionally, contractually, and criminally, uh, that that a landlord can look at. So now the second aspect of the question is, but how do I get my money? So there's only two places you're going to get money from. It's either the agent or the tenant that's paying the agent. Under these circumstances, the tenant has paid the rent. So you can't go to the tenant and ask them to repay rent because they've got a contract with you. You told them, pay this person. They've paid this person. This person's stolen the money from you. Technically, is your agent. So through the rules of agency, they act on your behalf. So the tenant has basically 
de-risked himself or the risk is passed over to you as a landlord because your appointee has decided to run away with the money. So the question now is, how do you get this money from the appointee? Simplest answer is you sue the appointee, uh, the agent, and you get the money from him. Uh, Insurance-wise, okay, so now, uh, so that kind of covers all those aspects. How do you get your money back? You sue him. So now the second part of the question is, how feasible is it to sue and is the insurance coverage for this type of professional um, misconduct? And now I, I, it keeps uh, it keeps escaping me. I'm not going to lie to you, because with attorneys, for example, we've got professional indemnity insurance and we've got uh, basically theft insurance. But they approached differently by the law society by the fidelity fund. So with us as attorneys, if uh, we've got a certain level of professional indemnity insurance, if we give you bad advice and you want to sue us, you can go lay the complaint. Uh, institute the claim and you might be paid out by an insurance policy. Uh, if money is stolen by us, it's a different story. First, you must go against us, try recover the money. And if you fail to do so, then you've got a claim against the insurance policy. Um, I, With estate agents, I can never remember uh, because I know that they've got different policies now with the act they're supposed to take out. Um, and if memory serves, those are f- um, professional indemnity covers that they're responsible for taking out themselves. Whereas attorneys have it incorporated, they don't. The uh, money from the trust account is covered by the Fidelity Fund. I just don't recall if the person has to go against them first and then the fund or can go to the fund directly. So Nick, maybe you can... Just jump in there and um, correct me. Or no, I think yeah, I think the way you've interpreted it is is the same in my head. Okay, it's cool. exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's the long and short of it. Yeah, well, there you have it. Uh, so yeah, um, it, with this uh, particular one, there, there, there's 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 many avenues uh, which uh, the the landlord or the property owner can actually um, pursue uh, depending on. Obviously, um, the, the the outcome of obviously her wanting the, the, her her money um, from the agent, and then yeah, um, so that I think those two questions are do covered for the the day. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, again for providing us um, with your insight on these questions, and we'll see everybody again uh, next week. Thanks, Thanks guys. Cheers. Cheers.